it as well. All right. Welcome back to my newest Terran guide. I shouldn't say that at the beginning. Oh, restart, restart. Welcome back. Today, we're going to be learning to play Terran. Uh, and th th the plan is, this is not a high-level guide. And this isn't a guide for someone who's never played StarCraft before. Instead, this is a guide for someone who enjoys the game, but has absolutely no idea. It's like, it's like opening a book without a table of contents. There's a lot of stuff in a lot of different orders, uh, but you got to start somewhere. It, it is my philosophy that the best way to do it is just see someone explaining what they're doing and kind of jump in. No build order guide written down on some piece of papyrus um, or a prima strategy guide or anything like that is going to prepare you like actually watching the game be played and then playing it yourself. So, uh, without with, with that in mind, uh, I'm going to be playing Terran for a few games. I'm going to be taking questions from anyone here watching live. Uh, and I'm just going to be doing the very basics. I'm going to aim for 75 or less actions per minute. Um, honestly, I'll try to keep it under 50. But I think 75 is reasonable to do almost everything I want to do um, without any extraneous things that I don't really need. You don't need to do any fancy micro or anything like that. You just build more shit than your opponent, and that's how you win at StarCraft. All right. So the key to Terran, uh, the most difficult parts of Terran, Terran is probably if you played real-time strategy before. It is the race most familiar. It has the same, like, you build workers, those workers are used to build buildings, and then you queue up a bunch of marines and tanks and stuff like that out of those buildings. So if you played any other RTS games, Terran is probably the most familiar to you. Uh, it, it does kind of depend, like, if you played Warcraft 3 and you played, like, Undead or something, well, there are specific situations, I do acknowledge that. Um, but it does have the, I, I guess, most common RTS mechanics. So, starting off with a command center, 12 SCVs, it says 12 out of 16. Now, I'll talk about mining efficiency a little bit later, that's not that important. What you should know, though, is you build SCVs and supply depots. Those are the most important things. SCVs are your workers. They mine your minerals. They get money. They get paid. Your supply depots allow you to make more SCVs and then eventually build an army. Uh, but we got to start somewhere. So he is a Zerg player, especially against a Zerg player. I'm going to build a wall at the front. You can build a wall in with a supply depot, a single barracks, and another supply depot all right next to each other. It might take a couple tries, but if you do that, uh, that means no Zerglings, no Zerg rush can get in. Uh, and you've kind of eliminated the first possibility to die to random shit. And that's what strategy games are all about. Eliminating your opponent's options while expanding your own. Alright, I'm going to send an SCV out. One minute is a good time to send a worker out, no matter what race you're playing. If you have no idea what you're looking for, just send a worker Not at the beginning of the game. It's really not that important to send a worker out right at the start. Because really there's not much they can do right at the start. Uh, so, behind this, I've also gotten a Vespine Gas Geyser, as I had the minerals. So, usually you make a barracks on about 16 supply, a Gas Geyser on 17, with all the gaps being filled in by SCVs. Yeah, if you're looking for settings or basic hotkeys, I, of course, have guides on that. They're all less than 15 minutes long. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, if you have the patience to sit through this, hopefully you have the patience to sit through them. But... Right off the bat, as soon as the barracks finishes up, I'm building an orbital command. Uh, and it looks like he is going for something of a Zerg rush. I got that SCV in his base. I see a spawning pool. I see Zerglings. So we're going to deal with that. And because he had so many, I'm going to build a bunker as well. We'll keep building Marines. I built another base. So this is one of those maps. Uh, it does kind of depend on the map. The maps are all different. There are seven different maps. Uh, so you have to kind of learn the ins and outs of each one, at least the basics for your first bases. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a wall, and behind this wall, I can just be safe. It's pretty simple. Like, he can't run up that ramp. He didn't have anything that can get through my wall very easily, but eventually he can build things like roaches or banelings to try to get through. He's got an overlord scouting in here. Let me turn the sounds up a little bit. I don't know why they were so quiet, but uh, maybe you can actually hear what's going on now. Kill that overlord. No information for him. And I'm just still building some marines here. That's it. Marines, and then immediately, 
You don't need more barracks. It's actually much better if you don't know what you're doing to make sure you get that factory in a timely manner. Especially when you have a wall in and you think he's going to be attacking. Another barracks is going to help you build some more marines, but a factory will help you build siege tanks. Which will allow you to defend all your bases very easily. Siege tanks are exactly what they sound like. So uh, we're going to focus on that. Behind that, I'm getting a starport as well. I've taken a second gas geyser. Usually two and a half to three minutes. A lot of players are really quick. I'm going to talk about these add-ons here as well in a moment. But a lot of players are really quick to get their gas geysers at the lower level. You don't need it. All right? You don't need it. Uh, you you got you to gotta learn to crawl before you can walk. And taking two gas geysers on one base before really understanding what they do. Uh, of course, the gas geysers over here, the refineries, means you're going to have all this gas and no way to spend it. I'm still building SCVs. A lot of people ask... How many SCVs is too many SCVs? If you're below the Diamond League, you shouldn't have a problem with having too many SCVs. Believe me, the, the correct number is seven, uh, 80. I'll say 80. But um, if you get up to 70 SCVs and you're still in the Silver League, you won't be there for long. Unless you literally do nothing but build SCVs. Stop trying to nitpick. All right. So I'm starting to get some more money. I'm building depots along the edges. I've got my production all on the 5 hotkey. And I'm using tab here uh, to go between it. It allows me to select the different types of buildings and I can select the barracks, AA, train two marines, tap, siege tank out of the factory, then tap again, maybe I get a viking. So I'm actually going to send that viking around my base. I'm using shift click and A click to be able to move the viking around and hunt for overlords. Who knows? Maybe he didn't make any overlords, but that's okay. So if I have all this money, first I check Am I going to get supply block? So I queue up some depots with that shift click again. That's important to use. We're going to drop some mules here. Honestly, like, as soon as you have the energy, unless you think he's going to be doing something sneaky, might as well drop the mules. You want to spend your energy as soon as possible. So I've chosen to get a reactor on... I've chosen to get a reactor on my barracks. I've chosen to get a tech lab on my factory for siege tanks. The reactor is to pump out. You might be like, well, without a tech lab on the barracks, how am I going to get stim pack? How am I going to get combat shields? Well, right now, what are you going to do? Get stim pack for your seven marines? Do you have fucking green berets in your army? You don't, all right? You're not playing Nova and co-op anymore. This is the real world. So you need enough marines to actually make it useful before getting another barracks as I'm working up here uh, and working towards that. So it's been a few minutes. It's been a few minutes. Honestly, I, I'm not even following my own directions. Every minute, you should be sending something out to scout. I didn't do that. I got lazy. Um, but just in case he's attacking, uh, I want to get that going. And I was a little bit late on this, too. I say every, by six minutes, you should have at least one upgrade starting. And you should focus on getting multiple upgrades as well. That's important. Not more important than making units, but very important. Because 3-3 three, three versus 0-0... Zero, zero, the 0-0 zero, zero units, I don't care if you have 200 marines, about 73-3 marines will kill 200 zero, zero marines. I don't know the exact math on that, but it's, it's pretty close to that number. So as I have money here, I'm adding some more barracks. I got another command center. We're going to scan. We see some roaches. Why not scan the main base? A Nidus network. So I got to check, do I have vision of all of my main base here? Do I see everything? Also, I don't want to get supply blocked. That's important, too. But, so that Nidus network can get into my base, and I can't kill it until it finishes. But, if I see where it's building, then as it finishes, I can have my units in position to gun it down. So, uh, what this also tells me, what this all, I look at his base, I see he has a lair, but he has a roach warrant, he has a third base, but he doesn't really have, let me, I'll scan one more time. He really doesn't have that many drones, like... Look at my mineral lines. They're full of SCVs. And I've got a third command center. And he has roaches. I can kill roaches. I can make marines. I can make marauders. I can make medevacs. And I can make siege tanks. The key here, it's not about countering his units. It's about countering... It's just having a more extended plan than him. You micro your macro. If I have... I don't care if I made 100 hellions. But if I have 100 hellions and he has 20 roaches, I'm still gonna win. So, I'm getting... All of this, I'm making orbital command, I'm throwing it on the hotkey as well. I'm not sure what this guy was doing. Very optimistic Viking over there, but uh, it will pay for its transgressions. Let's get into gas here. 
And as these upgrades finish up, let's get an armor. Get the 2-2 kicked off. All right. Mineral field exhausted. So, uh, this I actually don't have my hotkey scheme set up, but this is one of the few hotkeys I usually use to phone hotkeys. But for Terran players, a recommendation I can make is, uh, I'm not sure why I don't have it considering the hotkey profile name, but I switch my liftoff hotkey from L, which is on the other side of, my, of the keyboard, to F, which is much easier to hit. Um, so that way you can just slam F, lift off that command center, lift it over there. Uh, and then you can lift that much harder. I'm going to get some turrets up. Looks like we got a Nidus network. Let me hotkey all my army. Bring it over here. Make sure it's set up. And honestly, I almost want to just let him come out of it. Like, I have so much stuff. But I'm not. I'm just going to kill it. So we get the 2-2. Honestly, there's really no reason to attack. But just for matter of principle here, uh, I'm going to send out one drop. Just to be able to not use the Selecto Army Hockey. So I'm sending out this drop. I like to hotkey my drops on too. But I'm going to send it out. I'm just going to shift click. You can use the mini map and then D click and it will drop out over here. It's not on any other hockey, so uh, I don't have to worry about it. Fire and forget. That's 10 supply of units. That's nothing. All right? If it does damage, cool. If it does nothing, who cares? I see something on the mini map, though. What could that be? Is it. A Nidus network? Let's add all these units in. It is! Unfortunately, the five Zerglings he popped out, not going to make the difference. Let's scan the main again. It's been a little while. And he doesn't have a hive. He can't get Ultralis. He can't get Broodlords. I'm not very scared. If he's just going to keep throwing away Nidus Worms, he doesn't even have an expansion back here. I thought he might have that sneaky base in the back. Guess not. He His plan consists of trying to Nidus Worm a player who has already defended multiple Nidus Worms. I would argue that is not a great plan. So while he's focused on this, let's just stim these in, right click and then A click. And then, I don't care. They do whatever they want. I'm not gonna look at them again. They're distracting me. Looks like he's gonna attack the front here. We're ignoring that drop. I got supply blocked. If you're that supply blocked, you have that much money, drop down the supply. You don't need mules. What are you going to do? Bank up more money? Are you starting a new branch? They're only allowed to be three banks in the world. Everybody knows that. And it looks like Roach Hydra on the other side. And you know what kills that? Tanks, Marines, Marauders, and Metavags. All you need to do is make sure those tanks are set up. The Marines and Marauders are up in front, and you will obliterate it. It's not even close. So we're going to get some more turrets to line the base. We'll throw another command center in, because why not? Alright. I have that sensor tower in front as well. You want to put it forward? You don't want to put it in the middle of your base, because then it doesn't really cover anything. Look who's home for dinner. Stim the Marines. This isn't even a great spot for me, but he has 0-1 upgrades, and I have 2-2 medevacs and siege tanks. Look, my no hands. And there it is. Right place, right time. That's all it takes. And as you see there, I actually had less actions than him. But I was definitely making more deliberate actions. I was getting supply block less. I made 78 workers to his 48. Uh, but I was keeping up because I was making the right things at the right time. It's more important to get your tech up, to focus on upgrades, than to do... I saw I saw Maru do a 2 Medivac, 3 SCV Viking drop in the GSL, and that looked pretty sick. Maybe I should do... No! Not even Maru should be doing that, alright? But he does anyways. So, uh, just stick with your guns, and by guns I mean as many as possible. Marines, tanks, and marauders. You can, you can throw in, if you like Thors, you can go Thors and Hellbats and tanks, whatever. But as long as you're building them and you're keeping your money down, you're building SCVs and you're building supply depots, that's all it really takes. Alright. Well, that's a good question. That's a good question. I didn't actually explain that, but what's a 1-1 one, one or 2-2? Two, two? One, one, two, two, three, three. these all refer to the upgrades uh, on certain units. Um, 
So when I say 1-1 for my Terran units, that means the Marines and Marauders and all the Biological Infantry units have plus one upgrades, uh, which significantly increases their damage output. This is a general rule. It's not hard and fast, but each upgrade um, increases the damage they do by about 15%. It varies between the units, but for each upgrade you have, it increases the damage you do or decreases the damage done to you by units with lesser upgrades. Um, that's a general rule, but it's a huge number because it means, like, your 15 Marines can now beat maybe 19 Marines uh, and come out significantly ahead. So... All right, so I'm using camera locations as well. You might not want to get into it. I would actually rather get into it earlier rather than later. I didn't learn about camera locations till I was already in Masters, but they're very useful. I have a video on setting them, but the, the quick and dirty version um, is in your camera location hotkeys, you can choose a location to set. A camera location is a part of the map where you can use a hotkey to jump your camera to. Uh, it's kind of like a control group, but just for the screen. When you hit a control group button, uh, you jump to your control group selection. When you hit your camera location hotkey, you jump to your camera selection. So I'm just going to go ahead. I have mine on control F2 through control F5, and I like to set them on my bases. I'm just going to do it preemptively, even though I don't have another base, but control F2 on my main, and then I'll use the drag scroll, and then control F3 at my net. Now I can slam on F2, F3, and give everyone a seizure. Uh, and I can use that, like, say I'm at my SCV over here, and then, I don't know, there's a Reaper. Jump back to my base. There you go. I'm going to get into the gas, but I didn't actually mine, and I don't want another SCV. I want that orbital as quickly as possible. I didn't mine enough. Oh, looks like he's going for the engineering bay first. Hello. And now we see he's making two barracks, but those barracks are later than my barracks. So I'm not really concerned. Pimp my, my crib. All right, let's uh, go ahead and pimp his crib. Um... I don't, don't do this. Don't pimp your opponent's crib, all right? That just increases his property value, uh, and your resale value will go down. Um, so don't do that. Don't, don't do... But he asked nicely, so I decided to pimp his crib. So, um, but I would not give in to opponent's requests on most occasions. But, uh... All right. Let's go ahead and uh, finish pimping that out. But from that, I am expanding because I realize he doesn't really have any options. I don't need to have that many units if he doesn't have that many options to attack me, right? Like, he has two barracks and an engineering bay. So he can't, he can't move out with, like, five marines across the entire map. That's a huge map. Huge map. So, uh... Instead, I'm just going to sit back. I'll make a bunker from when eventually he removes my my uh, bitchin' engineering bays over there. But we'll get a siege tank. You, you seeing a trend here? Maybe you're like, well, you need a different building each matchup. I'm going to be straight up with you. You really don't need a different building each matchup. You make marines, marauders, tanks, and medevacs, and you should easily... Now, I'm, saying, I'm not saying should, but I'm saying... Those units can be used in any order, really, as long as you're spending your money in building SCVs to get to die. Um, of course, there are, on paper, better options in certain situations, but there, that's the bread and butter, all right? That's like the mashed potatoes. Uh, that's the mashed potatoes and, I don't know, well, you don't really have any meat to it. It's just kind of the most important. You just eat mashed potatoes. So it's not, like, exciting. It's just mashed potatoes, all right? And they were the instant ones, like the fucking flake ones, that you, the dehydrated potato. So that, like, like it's not exciting, but it get, it has the nutritional value you need to get through the day. All right, this this has gone too far. But um, that's what going for Marine Tank Viking Expand is. Um, it, it is the instant mashed potatoes in your life. And uh, you can't eat steak until you learn to eat your damn potatoes, all right? And I don't know what he's doing. I don't think I need to do this, but because I'm feeling very comfortable, I'm just going to get turrets in, in case he just rushed up 
You know what? Let's give him a scan. I haven't seen shit in a while, so... Looks like he's very interested in his one base place. So, I've got a lot of money in the bank. This is too much money. So we're gonna add on three barracks, a couple supply depots. Get my plus one attack, another siege tank. We'll throw up a reactor on my starport as well. And I have a Viking that I'm gonna patrol outside my base. So we're just building up this economy. I'm gonna take control of the watchtowers with my marines here. I'm gonna have another one of my precious marines at the front. And uh, we'll have another one over here. Why not? Fuck it. All right, throw another NG bay down. I'm gonna get two tech labs on these barracks and one reactor so I can get stim and combat shields because I'm a little bit slow on them. I mean, he's pretty slow on them too, but it's not about beating him. It's about beating yourself because if you beat yourself, you're improving, all right? It sounds bad. I did not phrase that well, but you want to beat yourself as hard as possible because then maybe you will learn a lesson. I don't, okay. Um, you, you get what I'm trying to say here. You get the, uh... Meta metaphorically. Anyways, uh, we need some more supply depots. Combat shields, stim, two medevex. We'll get another siege tank. And I'll throw up a third command center. I have all this production. Does he even have an expansion? He does now. Not an orbital, not many SCVs. I'm not worried. I'll get the plus one, and I think it's really important to focus on getting those upgrades and getting that tech. Once again, micro your macro. Don't get me. How do you how do you do moving drop with Metavax Winter? It's like once again, you need to learn to crawl before you can run or drop from uh, very quickly moving uh, paratrooper ships. Anyways, I've got my armory on the way. Keep building the depots. The siege tanks are sieged up. If he attacks in, he will fail. So we'll just keep building. There's no reason to really build marauders here. You could throw in some marauders. It's not that big a deal. Marines are usually the choice of higher level players because marauders are more supply heavy and they actually have less DPS against marines uh, because marauders do extra damage to armored, but marines are not armored. You might be like, well, siege tanks are armored. Well... If all they have is siege tanks, go ahead and build marauders. But most times the marines and like Hellion should be in front. Um, so only if they're going for like an entirely mech army, I would say build a lot of marauders. I'll throw some in just for flavor. All right. We'll put a little bit of uh, I can't believe it's not butter on those mashed potatoes. Uh, let's see if we can just kind of. Hello there. Stop right there, criminal scum. And just kind of do that. Looks like he has a banshee. So we'll uh, add a couple turrets. This is too many turrets I'm adding here. You don't need this many turrets, but I mean, you're already way ahead on economy. You just want to fight. Might as well lock it down. Even the sensor tower. Those things shoot while moving. Mm. Any more? Just high DPS. Quick attack. But yeah, the cyclone was changed. Not that a cyclone is something you should be building. That's gay. Obviously gay is the first word that comes to mind. Um, just, we'll just default to that one. Uh, very articulate. Alright, I get rid of these. The way to select all your idle SCVs at the same time is... So the way to select all of one type of unit... If you hold control and then you hit a certain type of unit, it will select all of that on a screen. Now, if you hold control and hit F1, which is the out of worker hockey over here, you just selected all your out of workers and you can go mine from your juicy third base. And then you can hockey all your command centers together, set a rally point, and now you got even more SCVs. More money, less problems. I'm still making medevacs, I'm tapping through my production, all of that shit. And I completely forgot about supply depots, so I'll make a few of those. And, uh, by the way, if you haven't yet, I really should do that this at the start of everything. But you might be like, well, how many SCVs do I have? Do I need more? Well, if you hover over your supply in the top right, you can see how much army supply. That's not how many marines. That's just how much general army supply, including medevacs, tanks, marauders, whatever. And how many SCVs you have. I'm at 63. Let's keep going. 
Uh, also, I'm just going to kill this Banshee real quick. But, we're almost, we almost have all the depots we need. What do we got here? What is this? Is that what? What? Thor is here! Alright. He's in... Uh, understanding the difference between Thor modes is not that big a deal. Um... Yeah, it's not that big a deal to understand the difference between the Thor modes. Let's not worry about that now. You probably shouldn't be making that many Thors. But they are cool, right? They're legit. But uh, it's not that important. So it looks like we got two more Banshees. Now, you might be like, well, I need a Raven to see Cloak Banshees. That's why I got my Command Center's hotkey. We can lay down those scans. Let's see. Control click my Marines just to select them so I don't stim. Uh, oh! I don't stim Marauders to kill Banshees. Marauders, uh, unfortunately, you're, they're so heavy, much like your mother, they're unable to tilt over very easily, so they cannot shoot up. So I've maxed out on supply. I didn't need to. I could have done some sort of fancy timing, but why do that when you can just select everything in a hotkey and move across the map? All right, so during this, I'm getting 3-3. Three, three. I'm making sure I'm building. I'm, I'm pretty confident I'm going to win the game here, but you should still be playing like he suddenly has three more bases and ten battle cruisers jump into the fight or something like that. Uh, something ridiculous. you got to play like that. You can't just assume. The easiest way to lose is to be like, well, I'm winning this game. And then when you lose because you weren't actually winning that hard, say, oh, I just threw the game. I won't throw it next time. No. You get lazy. You didn't throw the game. You lost the game. There's a distinct difference. I siege tanks. The key is when you can win with no hands. All right. Now, obviously, that deeper wall makes it a little bit harder, but not that much harder. Uh, now, you should still be macroing everything like that, but that's the point. Okay. Oh, yeah, we crushed that. He's got the banshees, everything like that. I can just scan for days. And, anyways, I got everything back at home. I got all the fixings. And this game came down to, once again, he didn't have a solid idea. Once I, I don't think it's that important to have, like, if it helps you, but understand that just having a build order is only half the battle. Understanding why the build order good Build order good, not bad, good, good build, much good build, very good build, tremendous build. No, but the reason this build is good is because it, one, it forces you to expand early. It's important to get in the habit of expanding early. Two, you have access to every sort of tech early on. So you build that barracks, you build the, the, the refinery, and then you work towards marines, tanks, and vikings, and you get the expansion by three minutes. Because you have all the tools you need to defend against everything in every matchup. You have siege tanks against, like, mainling bus. You have marines against any sort of, like, reaper pokes or adepts. Um, and just getting in the habit of expanding and building SCVs and getting upgrades and maxing out on units. And he's not leaving the game. But um, is so much more important than, like, well, I heard marines aren't very good against adepts, so I'm going to build Thors. It's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Job's finished. Technically, yes, Thors would counter a, a small amount of adepts. But don't. Don't do that. I don't know. All right. We're going to play one more. And uh, I'm going to take some good questions from the chat after this. So if you're watching this uh, and you weren't here live, um, I'll take some questions that I think I didn't cover and answer them after this game for a few moments uh, and hopefully get you a little bit extra. All right. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed the guide so far. Hopefully you learned something. Just kind of the idea. All right. We've got another Terran versus Terran, but once again, we're not focusing on what race he is. We're focusing on beating ourselves. I need to find a better way to phrase that. But it, it's all about 
being a little bit faster, being a little bit quicker, getting a few more SCVs, getting your upgrades higher, uh, maxing out as soon as possible. That is the focus. And once again, you can make whatever units you want. I, I personally recommend just the Marine, Marauder, Tank, Medivac. That's the bread and butter. That's the simple uh, version. But as long as you're making your production in a timely manner, as long as you're expanding and producing SCVs, you can build fucking mass widow mines uh, and still come out with wins. I don't think they will get you as far, but it, micro your macro. I'm just going to keep saying that over and over because it's the only important thing. I'm going to go send that SCV out. Uh, send that 17. One minute. Send the worker out. Fuck it. Cut him loose. I like hotkeying it on three. Uh, that's just kind of my... So my hotkey scheme for Terran, especially, is uh, on one, I have my main meat. Okay, I have like my, my medevacs, marine marauder, the main army. Early game, I just kind of throw everything everywhere. But, um... I, on one, I have my main meat. On two, I kind of have my extraneous units. This might be Vikings, which don't always want to do the same thing uh, as your main army. They don't want to just run into everything because they're air units. Uh, that might be like a drop. It might be ghosts or liberators or something. And then three is usually either for like random units, like single units, like a few ghosts uh, or maybe a single liberator or something like that or a scouting SCV. Ooh, this guy... Seems to have, but he scanned early. He, at first, I was like, he seems to have a grasp on what he wants to do. But so right now, we're in a bit of a dicey situation. Um, but let's try to take stock of the map here. So he has two barracks. Um, he has two barracks early on. He has gas. So what I was first afraid of are reapers, uh, because I'm expanding, and he could build reapers. Um. But I see as a marine at the front, I'm going to keep this SCV at the watchtower. And if I look at the map, the only way Reapers can get into my base is through the front. So I got kind of lucky. It's one of the maps where Reapers just kind of suck. Uh, there are some maps where maybe there's a little stepping stone in your back of your base so they can uh, come on in and have their way with you. But this is not one of those maps. So a bunker slapped down in the front. I already know he's focused on ground units. Why? He's got two wrecks. All right. Barracks only make ground units. So if he has two of them. He's probably going to be pretty focused on ground units, believe it or not. So once again, we'll go with the instant mashed potatoes. We're going to get the siege tanks, marines, a couple vikings, and then we'll just work on the upgrades and everything like that. All right. So we got the bunker laid down. I have the SCV at the watchtower. I already know my expansion is quicker because he made two barracks and didn't have one where I was making one and I had already scouted that. So that was the important information there. Alright, we'll get a siege tank here. And the the one admission I'll make that I don't really know, get an engineering bay a little bit before. If you think they're one base thing, you want to get an engineering bay. This goes for... All races, but really Zerg. But you get an engineering bay before four minutes, just in case of cloak. Uh, and then you can get turrets set up. I will scan very soon. I'm going to get a supply depot right near the edge as well. As I get my Viking out. I'll have another depot finishing on the other side. Let's give it a scan. And now, importantly, the placement of the scan is important because where you put the center of the scan should not be where you want to get vision. The center of the scan should be designed to maximize your vision. So what do I want to check for right now? I want to check for whether he's expanding. I want to check if his army's at the front or moving out. I want to check what kind of tech buildings he has. But if I just scan here or I scan here, I won't see some of those things. But if I scan here... I will see he has an expansion, he has the add-ons, he's researching Stimpak, he's got a lot of gas, and he's already finished the orbital, so that means that's been finished for a while. So I got a lot of information for uh, minimum cost. Alright, and while he's expanded, I, I still feel no pressure to pressure him, really. I'm adding on my barracks, I'm going to get another siege tank, but once again, we're going to work on... Being just microing your macro. I'm going to send out Marines to the Watchtower because remember there's only an SCV over here. 
We're gonna send out a bunch of Marines to the corners. Get a reactor here. You know what, we'll go up to five barracks. The technical amount you can support uh, on two bases if you're spending your money reasonably and you're not queuing up a bunch of units. A lot of players are like, well, how do I get that many buildings? How do I use them? Well, if you have five siege tanks queued up uh, spending your money before it actually does anything, well, then you can't afford it. So you got to be careful not to be making too many units uh, more than you can produce at one time. And a lot of Terran players either add too much production and then have no money for units, or add too little production and then queue up units. And then option three are the players who add just the right amount of production and then micro one drop for two minutes and then have 2,700 minerals with 25 SCVs. That option's pretty damn common as well. So don't be that guy. At the very least, don't be that guy. Uh, the other two are better, but they're still not great. Oh yeah, we're getting all this. I'm going to get a third CC. We're throwing more reactors on. I have the tech labs pretty much just for stimming combat shields. But once again, I, I still, like, I'm making sure I have vision. I want to make sure I know if he's moving out, but really I don't feel pressure. Uh, because I know I'm building my things in a reasonable time. I haven't gotten super supply blocked. I have a lot of production. We're going to throw down another scan. We see the starport just now adding a reactor. So we know he doesn't have that much mobility. Because if he didn't have a reactor at starport before, then he can't have very many medevacs because he didn't have a starport, right? Uh, so the math checks out. But uh, we're going to add on the armory and the engineering bay to be able to continue those upgrades up towards that plus two range. And I'm continually making supply depots. I'm still building it. 26 over 16. All right, we'll talk about money efficiency. And I'm going to, uh, if you want to see all the details and all the, I have a six minute video or something like that on all the details. But you can go over 16 out of 16. You can go into the red. It's not a bad thing. Up until you have 24 workers at a base, you're still getting more income. But every worker from 1 to uh, where it, the limit there, that means you'll get 100%. So that SCV brings home 100% of the bread. Now, every SCV you add after that works for less pay. Okay, you don't get quite as many minerals because they're sitting around a little while. And then once you get up to 24, that's when it's actually more worth it to be long distance mining. I'm not because I'm about to get a third base. I'm not really worried about that. It's, it, it's a... Better problem to have too many SCVs and nowhere to put them than not enough SCVs. So I'm not really worried about that. But the summary is until you have up to 24 SCVs on a base, and then don't worry too much about whether you're a bit in the red. Like having 19 or 20 is not a bad problem. So, so but I'm going to take some of the SCVs from these bases. I've already set up my camera locations to do the ring around. And getting, just getting a little bit of everything. But let's let's just try to lay a... Well, we're not laying a scan down anymore. I need to call down supply because I was getting lazy. All right. And yes, that applies to all the races. It is not just Terran that applies to all the SCVs and probes and drones mining work the same. The only kicker here is the mule. The mule which carries all those extra minerals, mines about as much as four additional SCVs, and it ignores the worker count. It can mine right over the top of those SCVs. So uh, it does not contribute to how many workers you have and how efficient they are. It g just gives you that cash money. Uh, so don't worry about mules if you're in the red. You can just drop them down. They'll mine your money. They will mine you out a little bit quicker, but uh, that's one of those good problems again. And, well, attacking is fine. Yeah, we look at his upgrades. You can click on him. If you haven't yet checked my settings, you haven't yet enabled enemy unit selection, I don't think, now that I've said it out loud, I have to explain to anyone how important it is to be able to select enemy units uh, and buildings. So uh, I'll just leave that one there. I've actually, now we're reaching the limit of SCVs, but we're also reaching reaching the limit of supply. So we're just going to bring everybody together here. One nice big A move. And while I'm doing it, making sure I'm getting all my upgrades, we're going to get another factory in a moment after I get all this gas. 
Make sure we're queuing up some Marines. I'm going to keep scanning this army, make sure it doesn't just end up in a weird location. So you see, we're going to do a very basic 1-2 here. So I'm going to split off this medevac and go into the main. And then I'm going to re-hotkey all this army on the same hotkey. Uh, so I just re-boxed it, control 1. And I'm going to send this one drop. Now if this fails, whatever. Uh, I can always attack in. But before anything goes down, we're going to add a little bit of extra stuff on here. And I'm pressing D and clicking to drop while moving. Not that it's... And we'll go into the mineral line here. But we'll take a look. Did he move his entire army? Now players of this caliber have a tendency to do that. So those five marines were the bait. And now here's the switch. And he's coming down the ramp and watch this. I feel like that was a little bit. For Cyclones, that's a good question. Uh, there are a few units that I didn't really use, but I'm going to talk about right now. Hellions are good. Uh, you can combine them in early on, especially against Zerg. But if you want to go for a mech army, Hellions and then Hellbats are kind of like your Marines and Marauders. Uh, they're good, um, especially if your opponent is going for like a lot of Zerglings. Cyclones are kind of an early game unit. They have a lot of DPS against strong units. Like uh, They're very good against Stalkers. Uh, and they, they're very good against Reapers because they have so much HP and armor. They drop off over time because they're clunky. They're big. Uh, and they get in the way. They don't do that much. They don't do splash damage. They do single target damage. So if you really, like, you don't know they're attacking you, like, on one base, a Cyclone is not a bad option. If you don't have time or you don't have, uh, really the opportunity to get a Siege Tank, a Cyclone can fill in pretty well against things like one base attacks and proxies. A Cyclone is kind of your proxy defense against... Uh, cannon rushes, um, I mean, tanks are better, but cyclones in a pinch, pylon rushes, like roach pushes, uh, even early tank pushes or reaper rushes from Terran, a cyclone is your early game kind of uh, defender. So, But I do stand by uh, the 111, the Destiny Cloud Fist, the barracks, the starport, and the factory in the starport, and then you kind of branch out from there. I recommend the bio, but the real focus is on SCVs, supply depots, just very basic scouting, uh, and then getting your upgrades in production sooner than you think you can. 
Uh, micro your macro. That's the key. Thank you for watching.